Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Okay, so Tina said it is the first day of winter today. Well, hello. And how many more days till Christmas? If you're celebrating, 20, four more days till Christmas, and I'm super excited. So uh, last week when we did the premium class, I actually <laughs> made a little boo-boo because I said, okay, this is our last, my class class for the month, but Nope, we had today. So uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is Leibella Ralston. I'm from faber Castell USA. And it's time for another fun class here at Michael Stores. And of course, today it's going to be a very cute and holiday themed art that we're going to create. We're going to create a gingerbread lady. Um, if you were able to print your handout, so we included a handout uh, for this class. Um, last week, what we did, and we mind you, we had um, a much longer time for premium classes. So I had like an hour and a half. But what I did was I transferred the sketch and then colored it in and finished the project. Um, but an hour and a half is almost not enough. So that was crazy. But this is what we're going to do today. We're going to create this beautiful gingerbread lady. And I say beautiful, cute. We're going to also work with some mixed media today. So we have gelatos. We have some colored pencils in here. The gold Faber. Um, uh, nope, this is not the aqua. This is the gold Faber pencils. And then I have the Albert Durer in here. Now, if you don't have all these supplies that I have in front of me, that's okay. Basically, if you want to just learn how to do the sketching and then do the coloring, um, that's perfectly fine. Um, and if you have the similar colors, basically any colors, you know, the brown, beige, nude color for your gingerbread. Uh, if you wanted it a little bit darker than a darker brown. And then um, I have some colored pencils because I really like adding some textures to my illustrations. Um, all right. Okay. So I'm going to say hello to everybody before I move on. Hello, Judith. Um, yes, the mixed media paper is definitely okay. Uh, Robin said, oh my goodness gracious, it's going to be cold. Ooh, it is actually colder here in Texas. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Um, sunny, warm Los Angeles. Kathy, no, you want to experience the cold too. Um, hi, Judith. Hi, Scarlett. Hello, everyone. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Tina. Hello, Lakita. Uh, hi, Barbara. He hello, Boss Queen EJ. Hello, everybody. Okay, so if you are actually watching this on a replay, I'm so sorry that you missed the fun because all of us here are having lots of fun. Well, it hasn't started yet, but we're going to. Okay, so this is what I have. This is my watercolor sketchbook from Michaels. This is the Artist Loft. This is the number two, artist level number two. And I have a big size. It's like a um, US letter size. So it's a 8.5 by 11 inches. It's a little too big. Sometimes I feel like it is too big to fill in, especially when you have... When you're thinking of ideas, you know, it's like, what am I going to do next? If you want to keep a winter, oh, winter journal, <laughs> I'm sorry, because I'm looking at winter drawings. If you want to keep a journal, I think I always advise people to go a little bit smaller than what you think you would like. An A5 size to me is I think the perfect size because it's not too small. It's not too big. It's much easier to fill in the pages, you know, um, but if you have like a landscape, it's always nice to have a bigger size for landscape, but an A5 to me really is perfect. Okay. So this is a watercolor paper, but yes, mixed media paper is okay too, because we're going to be working with water mediums. I have my clean bowl of water. I have a water brush and I also have a round brush number two from Princeton. And then like what I said, we'll be working with gelatos. I have here some teal colors, red, of course, some passion fruit, the pink color, uh, guava. And then I also have Odyssey, which is like a um, yellowish, you know, very yellow, yellow ochre color. It's very pretty. All right. Um, and of course I did that. Hold on one second. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Here we go. Also, what was I saying? If you don't have a graphite sheet, I included the graphite sheet in the list. But if you don't have it, I have this trick. If you have a graphite pencil, this is what's going to work. If you want to use 
look at my sketch. It's going to be too small for my drawing. So I think I'm going to put mine on the side because I'm going to add something later. I want to add the Holly Jolly beside it. So if this is too big for you, you might want to start print it again much smaller. Or if it's going to be just big enough for an A5 size, let's see. What size paper do you guys have? Do you guys have the nine by 12, the bigger size? Because this is an A5. I think it's perfect on an A5. You can just do the lettering much smaller. So either one, you do the lettering smaller or you do the gingerbread lady smaller. So either one, but I'm gonna do my gingerbread on the left and then I'm gonna trace the holly jolly to the right side of it. If you don't have the graphite sheet, if you have a graphite pencil, um, let's see, even just a regular HB pencil, what you can do is do this on the back like this. I'm going to use my bigger one so that I can cover much larger space at a time. So we're just going to cover it. Zoom that in. the whole image. And then we're going to trace over the image and we're going to transfer all of this like that. And then we're going to outline and we're going to trace it. So I'll put it in the bottom left like this. And then I'm going to transfer. If you guys don't have a graphite sheet or a pencil, you guys can trace over this as well. So I'm going to show you. See, oh, it's so light. Sometimes it's so hard to see it, but. So it's kind of like a very perfect silhouette, perfect sketch to start with. All right, so does everybody have a pencil? Oh, Judith, thank you. I'm glad you like my shirt. Do you guys see, I have some bangs. <laughs> I cut them like 10, 15 minutes ago. <laughs> no, I don't have existential crisis. <laughs> Oh no, I lifted my paper. No, I don't know where the... Because eh. you guys, okay, here, we're just going to work with it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so everybody has transfer paper. If you don't have the transfer paper, well, let's do this pencil. All right, so I'm going to trace over my gingerbread and I'm just using a pencil to trace over it. As long as you're applying some pressure, to really transfer your the graphite behind our paper. And then for the circle part, because circle is a little tricky to do, just go one stroke at a time, like little tiny strokes to complete your one big stroke. Like this. It, uh, it was easy to draw it. Kathy said, yes, it is. Because look at this, everything is just shape. You know, so I can actually finish this without my tracing paper, if you'd like. So for everyone that doesn't have a graphite paper, I mean, <laughs> graphite sheet. And if you don't have the graphite pencil to do the transfer, I'm going to finish it freehand as well. All right. So for the dress, think of it as everything is just shape. When we're drawing kawaii or any type of object, you want to really consider thinking of it as a shape first before you look at the whole picture as an image, because sometimes it's it's a little harder to think of it that way. You want to overcomplicate things in your brain. So for the dress, what is it? It's kind of like a triangle. So that's what we're going to do. So from here, this is my color. And when we're drawing anything kawaii, everything is more on the round side. I don't have a lot of sharp lines. So even with this one, even my triangle, we're not really gonna draw a triangle that is sharp, you know, corners and all that. The, on the edge, I'm going to make it a bit round. And once I have one side, I'm going to do the other side. So from that side as well, I'll bring this down just like this. 
like that. And then I want to create some scalloped. So one first. I'm going to draw a second one. Third one. And then that until to complete it. Now for the arm, what I have is one arm is kind of like waving high and the other one is just um, pointing down, resting on its side. So from here, think of it as this is her armpit. I'm gonna stretch it all the way up, just like that. And I'm gonna match the rest of the size of her head. So we want it proportioned. So again, I don't have any sharp lines, even that I'm going around it and just like that, okay? And then this one, like what I said, it will be resting on her side. So from the color again, it's kind of like following the shape of my dress. I'm just gonna bring this down just like that. I'm gonna round it like a half circle, just going down just like that. And then for its legs, I'm going to, from here, kind of like copying the size and also the shape of the arms. So it's kind of like letter U, just like this, okay? And then for the dress, I wanna make this kind of like a peppermint, maybe the blue, we'll see. And then here we're gonna add some icing. The other part is like wavy. And then I'll copy the same way. I'll do the wavy part first. And then this one is just like two parallel lines like that. And then for the eyes, it's kind of like a mountain, like a hump just like that. And then I'll thicken it up. I'll add another layer, just copying the same shape, just like that. And I'll draw a very big smile, adding another layer down to it. All right. And of course it's a sketch. You can always, um, fix it around, you know, change it. If you feel like, Oh, that's not, how I want it, it's not proportion. You can fix it. The reason why I love sketching is because you can make your changes and all that. And it's much, 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 much better to do that instead of creating your final art straight on with a painting. You can make changes when you draw sketching. That's a really great practice. Okay, so now that I draw it, I'm gonna erase it. <laughs> Now I'm going to lighten it because we're going to start applying colors in here. And like what I said, we'll be working with um, mixed media. The first layer of color that I'm going to apply would be from the gelatos. Now, this part right here, if you're using it, I saw someone that's doing uh, using some watercolors. That's definitely perfectly OK also. But what will happen is that. Um, if you just want watercolor and you're not going to use colored pencils um, on top, then you're going to lose a little bit of some details. So you might want to line out your drawing if that's what you like. I think I erased too much of my circle. Now I don't know where it's at. <laughs> so you might want to do a little bit of line art just in case you want to bring back some of the details. And that's why I love using colored pencils because when you're using watercolor and you create a wash, a wash of colors, which means it's kind of like very um, translucent because we're working with water. So it's not going to be as vibrant unless you want to do layers on top of layers on top of layers. So there we go. Okay, so now for the first part, I want to work from the top to the bottom. And I'm going to start with the body first. And we are going to use the Odyssey. And this time I'm going to use the gelatos. Gelatos are super versatile. You can, you know, we have so many projects using the gelatos. But this time we're going to work and use it like a watercolor. So 
I have a paper towel in here just in case I make mess. Watercolors are tricky because it's all about the amount of water that you want to use, amount of colors that you pick up. Sometimes you get too much water that you end up with some pool of water in there and it gets rather frustrating and that's understandable. All right, so I'm just going to pick up some colors and I'm not going to worry about trying to be overly careful in here. Gelatos, the more water you use, the more translucent the colors are going to be. So that means because gelatos are water soluble, we start blending with water, but once they're dry, it's going to be water resistant. So that means once it's dry and we're not happy with the vibrancy of how vibrant the colors and how saturated the colors, so we can add more layers to it, all right? If you feel like it's not moving much better, sometimes add more water and just pick up more colors also. And here I'm just not overly careful, but you know, careful also. When it comes to the eyes, we want to go around that. And right now, you might not be able to see the colors because it's super, super light, super light. All right. Sarah, hi. Hi, Amy. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you guys noticed. I wanted to do something. Um, very holiday theme. So I thought green is a nice color. I got it from H&M guys. Sarah said she loves my shirt also. You guys are so sweet. And it's super comfortable also. Um, Lana said, is it just her face that I'm trying to color now? Yes, I'm just trying to color the face. Now I am coloring her arm. So while it's still wet, I'm going to add another layer of color and I'm just going to concentrate on the outer part. We're going to like create kind of like a border. So we're creating shadows now. So here I'm going to add some darker value in here. Just like that. So if you're using watercolor, make sure that your first layer is very light. Just create a wash of color in there. And to avoid those harsh lines like that, I'm just going to blend it with water and blend out so there's no sharp lines like that. You know what? I know it's a little too hard to see because of the glare. So let me do this like that. Is that better? I think that's better. Yeah, that's better. Here we go. And I'm going to add more in here. See, we're just keep adding layers. Creating some shadows. Because right now, our light source is really on the, it's almost like straight on to our image. So what's happening is the highlight and the lighter colors are on top of everything else. So everything below it, like this part of the arm right here, we're gonna make it just slightly darker. So there's like um, a light that's bouncing and the highlights is on top. Okay, so we wanna keep adding shadows in here. And I think this is what I love about the gelatos because when you first apply it, it's so light that it's almost not there, right? But you can pack in the colors and it's going to, um, the colors and the saturation will be intensified the more you add layers upon layers and upon layers. And I don't wanna add, look at this, where the lines, you can really see it's so visible. We don't want that. So we want a very smooth transition from the light to the dark side. So I'm just smoothing it out with water. There you go. I'm going to keep that. 
let that dry, I'm going to move on to the next arm. So we're going to color this part right in here. And don't worry about it if you go like um, outside the line a little bit, because we can correct that with the colored pencils. You know, we're going to bring back some details in here later. So like that. What you can also do is that use the colored pencils, use the colored pencils first to line it out. But I really don't like that um, style because sometimes the colored pencils can be a little too harsh in the beginning and then it will be hard to cover it up, especially if it's a oil-based pencils like the gold Faber pencils, that means they're waterproof. So that's why it's good for line art. But to me, the way I create my art, I love to do the wash of colors first and then bring back the details with some colored pencils and sometimes markers too. Like that. I'll go over here. Now for the leg part, the shadow that we're going to create is the dress will cast some shadow on the legs as well. So we're going to create some shadows and depth in here. Right now, I'm just doing the wash of colors first. Okay. All right, so now for the dark areas, we want to go over here on the inner side. So a little bit here underneath the dress and then goes here. Okay, the concentration of the darker would be in the inner thigh. So, but here we're going to add a little bit. And again, if you like that look of having some sharp lines, that's okay too. You know, but I personally like that clean gradient, that smooth transition. So I'm going to avoid the sharp lines and just blend as much as I can, smoothen it out and create that smoother gradient. Like that. And I'll add a little bit here. I think I brought it down too much. There. All right, I'm good. I want to add a little bit more darker and over here on this part of the arm. Kind of like, you know, it's touching the dress. So it's also casting that darker shadow, just like that. Sarah said that she's using color pencils. Yeah, it's going to be the same way. So if you, you're going to use the color pencils directly, you want to start with very light application. So very light application. Then you keep adding in more layer to add more colors, but avoid to apply pressure in the beginning because what's going to happen is that you're going to blend it right in the beginning if you apply too much pressure. So if you're using color pencils, very light pressure first and do the build up slowly. Here. There we go. Okay. And just a little bit more over here. I like adding some natural shadows and highlights to my drawings and my illustrations, because even though it's like a cartoonish look, it's still not going to look flat. Because if we just did the white, you know, light wash of colors, everything is not going to be, it's not going to have dimension, you know, it's, but again, it's just me. Here we go. Okay, so now the second part is we're going to use the guava to create, to color in the dress. And this is like a very pretty coral color. Look at this, super pretty. Now, like the like what I said with the gelatos, he, this is very versatile. You can actually color in your image like this and then blend it 
But what I'm trying to avoid is I don't want that. I don't want the, the, the strokes that the gelatos are going to leave. I really want this almost like watercolorish look um, and not a lot of strokes from the gelatos itself. The first layer, I want it to be really like light wash. Now for the strokes, I'm going to add that intentionally by using the colored pencils later on. This one is has more vibrancy of colors. Look, so we're not going to layer too much in here because this is pretty saturated also. Very, very pretty coral color, this guava. If you guys don't have this, I think you need this in your stash. Pretty color, super pretty. And I don't know if, um, you know, it's just me, but I tend to use the same color palette <laughs> quite often. But of course, it depends on if it's seasonal, then of course the colors change. But I have, um, I have a very favorite color palette and it's a tie between brights and pastel shades. How about you? Are you a warm? Are you a cool? You know, are you pastel or bright or neon? I'm curious what you guys love when it comes to your color palette and how you choose it. Good thing about the gelatos is that they have many different colors. They come in many different colors and also different finishes, you know? So there's metallic, there's a translucent, there's iridescence. So many different ones. And for the next year, can we can you believe we're already talking about 2023? We have so much in store for our future classes and I'm super excited if you guys have any requests or any, you know, ideas you want to um, send my way please do so. Reach out on social media. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you. Say hello. Okay. So I love this. And I'm going to color in the bow. Also, the guava, except for the middle part. So this two part of the bow here, I'm going to color in with the same color. Guava. Uh, no, Darlene, it does not have an odor. Don't use it as a lipstick. Although it kind of look look like <laughs> look at this color. It could look pretty. No, they don't. That's what I love about them. Even um the pit artist pens that we have, they don't have any odor because I understand what you mean. I don't like that. After a while, you know, at first I'm like, okay, I, I really don't mind the beginning, but after a while it gives me headache. So I don't like anything that has odor as well. Although, you know, alcohol markers are, those are different. It's like, if you like it, then you got to go take that odor with it. Um, Amy said she loves the metallics. I know I love the metallics too. I love it. I have one here, which is the, um, what color is this one? This is the metallic mint because I do have the Albert Durer watercolor markers on cobalt green, but if you guys don't have it, that's why I pulled the uh, metallic mint. Just in case you don't have the marker, then you can just use the gelatos in a different color or, you know, your watercolors or colored pencils too. All right, I'm good with that. I'm gonna color in the color, in the mint color. Ah, so we're just gonna use the metallic in there. How's that? This is so pretty. Sarah said we should do Wizard of Oz drawings. Ooh, one of my favorite. I love Wizard of Oz. We should probably like do themed um, illustrations like that. That would be really fun. Like um, for the whole month, we should create like a um, different character from themed a movie or a book or a thing like that you know that would I think that would be really fun uh Judith said she loves the colors thank you especially the blue passion fruit gelato very pretty yes <laughs> look at this 
I love this pink. It's my favorite too. Lakita said that she loves the metallics, the pastel. Um, Jennifer said pastel. I'm, I'm, it's Thai. It's really Thai between brights and pastel colors. Scarlett said pink for life. Yes, I love pink too. Ooh, Amy said uh, we should, we could do the Barbie for the movie in July. Harry Potter. Oh, we have a Potterhead here, Kathy. <laughs> what am I doing? I forgot what I'm doing. Barbie. Ooh, Barbie. So fun. Pink. A lot of pink. Harry Potter too. You know, I love to do, I, I did a Harry Potter theme, but um, I did animals for and turned them into the characters. So I, I create my own characters. I have a bear that's called Pinky. I have a unicorn character and I dress them as Harry Potter. <laughs> it's turned out super duper cute. So yes, I love all these ideas. It really does help a lot because, you know, especially if we invest in products and I think um, as, you know, adults and we tend to kind of like really forget to create. And so I commend everyone that's here today and, you know, joining us, if you're watching this on YouTube also, you know, hope you'll be able to join us live because it's always fun to have this interaction like this. Uh, Jennifer saying, how about a Hello Kitty theme? I'm a Hello Kitty fan. I love it. I love, love, love Hello Kitty. And that's why all the new Hello Kitty theme on Michael's, the baking, I just don't know how to bake. That's why. That is my problem. <laughs> I don't know how to bake, so I can't use it. Okay. But I love all the Hello Kitty. I saw it. I'm like, ah, I want all of those. I love stationaries. So, all right. So now I'm using the passion fruit. I'm actually going to use a passion fruit for the lettering. I think that's what I'm going to leave this one for. I'll just use the red cherry to add some details for the icing. Um, this part right here. Let's clean my brush first and I'll use it for the middle of the bow. And also this one, I'm gonna create like a peppermint look. Okay, Judith said, I think one time we did a beautiful sun landscape. Yes, I love that idea also. We should definitely do more landscape. And you know what guys, I've been trying to learn about florals as well, so botanicals. So I hope you guys are ready for that. So landscape, botanicals, more character. Do you guys do um, some type of art journaling as well? Some mixed media, you know, some fun techniques when it comes to mixed media. I love doing some mixed media, some stamping, you know, some, some stencils and all that. So for the peppermint, I just added like, um, like, triangle to create the peppermint side and then i'm just adding some lines to add more details in here sometimes it's hard to do when it's like super tiny like this All right so definitely landscape yes noted you guys are good at these ideas thing and then, of course, um, this will be my last class. I said this last time, but again, this time it's for sure. My last class for this year. I can't believe it, guys. It's going to be 2023. I wish everyone, you know, a wonderful holiday. Spend it, you know, with your loved ones. I know I'm going to, mama's oldest is coming home. So my, my oldest daughter is coming home this holiday and I'm super excited. I love Christmas. Okay. And now what's next? I'm going to use the mint color. I forgot that for the icing part as well. So this is what happens when I add too much water. And that's why I always have a paper towel beside me. Sometimes I'm actually holding the paper towel because I tend to get too much water. And so if there's too much water in there, just leave it alone for a little bit and move on to the next, the next step of your drawing. Because the more you 
try to fix it, eh, sometimes ends up as a disaster. So I'm going to leave that. Now for the eyes and the details, I think I'm going to use the colored pencils in here. I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. But look at this, all that washed look. I really love it. It's super pretty. It's so cute. But we're going to bring now the details in here. So while this is drying, I'm going to get my 132 and also the 283. I'm going to bring now details for the face. I'm going to dab this, make sure that it's dry. Remember that shadow part, the darker part. I'm just going to add more. Now, if you use the colored pencils in here, of course, you want to skip this part now. You're almost done. So if you want some details in your illustration, you might want to do some line art if you have a marker that you want to use. But me, for this style of drawing, I'm not going to use a marker. I'm just going to use some colored pencils to bring in, bring back the details. And I'm going short strokes. Notice how I'm not doing like one long stroke at a time. So everything is just kind of like one short stroke to complete the full circle, just like that. There. And then I'll go in with a lighter color to blend this dark. Color right here. That's why the colors that I picked are similar to the gelato colors, except for this dark brown, because this is to really bring back all the details in here. So add more in there, just like that. And then if you want to do that for the arms as well, so go over the sketch basically. So we're gonna use dark brown to create that line art. But still, you know, the pencil will make it still soft and not harsh because if you use a marker in here, it's gonna to be too harsh. And then of course, that's a different look as well. But for this one, this is what I want, like a very storybook type of illustration. Like that. So it's like, it's one of the pages in a book, a children book. And that's what I've been loving lately is that type of very soft, whimsical type of illustration. Like that. Just like that. I feel like my legs are way too <laughs> on the right side, but you know what? It's okay. Soft, soft, soft on this side. Like that. Love it. Okay, so for the eyes, I'm going to use the teal color, which is the 162. Okay, here we go. And look, I'm not applying too much pressure. So I'm creating a also very soft look in here. Very light. Just like that. I feel like my right one, I made it too thick. So I'm going to fix that right now. Trying not to make it too thick. Like that. And then here. And bring back the details in here. Now the gelato is dry. And I'll do the same with the pink. Oh, 
All right, and now I'm going to use the darker blue to kind of like outline this teal one in here. So we can just have two different colors. If you have limited colors, that's okay. Just use a teal one and then just add a little bit more, another layer, and then apply a bit more pressure so you can really lay down more colors in there. And then I'm gonna go back and use the teal again and kind of soften everything and then add more layer of this teal color. Just like that. And to do the same thing here. And then I'll add more saturation in here, just like that. And then I want to add a little bit more blush. You know me with my blush. I got to have some pink in here. This beautiful color is one, two, three. One, two, three. There. So just an oval shape. I started with the outline and then filled in the space. Just like that. Now, if you want to add some details, you know, some um, a little bit of details for the dress, we're going to use the same pink color. I'm just going around it, short strokes like what we did with the face and the darker side. I'm just concentrating on the bottom, the bottom part of the dress, just like that. And this time, I don't know if you guys can see it. I am intentionally creating some strokes. See, visible strokes in here of the pencils. just adds character to the drawing. If you don't want that, you may skip this part right here. Okay, then I'll add a little bit here also where the colors are. Just to bring in some depth in there, right? So how many of you here um, have been practicing their lettering since the beginning of the year when we started? I hope that you've kept a journal, a sketchbook, or any type of the classes that we created, you know, illustrations, um, our lettering projects and all that. I hope that you'll be able to flip through your journals and say, oh my gosh, look, you know, from the very first month that we started, January last year, we created some vision board and then we, you know, did some lettering projects. I hope that there's a lot of progress that you see in there. And if there's not a whole lot, trust me, there is progress. Sometimes we are our worst critic. And so we're always so hard on ourselves. You should be proud of yourself, honestly, you know, for doing this and being creative and staying creative and doing some fun stuff. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of myself too. <laughs> All right. I know it's so cute. It's so whimsical. Now we want to do our lettering um, holly jolly. That's why I kept this right side over here blank because we want to do the word holly jolly. And we want to start with a pencil or if you want to do transfer it again, like what we did here, you want to do transfer the holly jolly. You can do that. But I'm going to start with a pencil and I'm just going to write Holly Jolly, and I'm gonna do a script. Okay, so H O L Y. Or if there's any other words that you wanna put in here, then that's fine too. Maybe your name. And then once I have the words, I'm going to use my meetable eraser to lighten this. And then I'm going to use 
my gelatos to do the lettering. Right, I think it's light enough like that. Um, Kathy, yes, Kathy, all the classes that we have, um, except for the premium classes, uh, it's going to be um, on Michael's YouTube channel. So if you just, there's a lot of videos, but if you scroll and you see um, Faber Castell, there's a lot of lettering classes that we did this year. So I hope you'll be able to catch up because next year we're going to, you know, learn a whole lot more. Okay, so for the lettering, notice how this is really big. I only have my number two brush in here. So I'm going to switch brushes and I'm going to use um, this brush from Faber-Castell. This is a water brush. This is almost like a number four to me. So if you have a number four brush, that works just the same. And like what I said, I'm gonna use a passion fruit um, color. The pink one is gonna be bright. It's gonna be super pretty. Now, one thing that we've learned when it comes to lettering, it's all about the pressure, the amount of pressure we use when we're um, writing. So to create that beautiful thin and thick, um, thin is going to be every time your motion is away from your body, this is called your upstroke. Every time you write away from you, this is your upstroke, and this is where you're going to go light on your pressure. And every time you write towards your body, so every time you go down, that's called the downstroke. And the downstroke is when you're going to apply pressure to create a thicker line because the beautiful brush lettering, it's all about this thin and thick line, and it's just, it's beautiful, you know? So that's what we're going to do. And I'm not going to go into in-depth, but I'm going to say when I'm going light and I'm going heavy so you guys can just follow along. If you're using just doing a print style of lettering in here, that's perfect too. Okay, so I'm going to load up my brush with my gelatos. And so again, away from my body, very light pressure. And then I'm going to be using really the tip of my brush. So let me zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see. So the tip of the brush is what I'm gonna use when I go up like this. So going up just that tip of the brush. And that's why sketching is super important because now I don't have to really stress myself where my strokes are gonna go. That's why I love doing the sketch first. And also this is big letters, so will be stressful. Okay, so now that I have my thin stroke, for the thicker stroke, I'm going to use the tip and the body of the brush and I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna go switch in here so you guys can see it. So here, I'm going to go apply a bit of pressure, the body, the tip and the body. And notice how that brush, see the bristle? I'm using the body of the brush, just like that, to create that thicker line. All right, okay. So now I'm gonna go move along. All right, up. Tip of the brush, pressure, tip. Just like that. But if you want to go have just one stroke, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Look. Ah, that's why like water brushes are sometimes tricky because it's like that. Oops. You kind of like spill out water without my consent. <laughs> so ah, accidents happen. So I'm just going to go over that and pretend because I have heavy hands. I sometimes accidentally kind of like apply pressure to this, the barrel and I squeeze the water and, the, and then I end up with a pool of water in there. So, and I don't, 
I can't, I don't know how to not touch this. I'm trying where it's just holding the top, but I cannot, I have to be like this. So I'm just going to be careful. The time where I squeeze the barrel is when I'm going down also. It's kind of like applying pressure. I also apply pressure with the grip of my brush pen. So if you have that trouble, you're not the only one. Notice it. I'm the same way. So if you feel like it's just you, no, it's not. It happens to everybody, you know, so... Sometimes I apply too much pressure and that's why it's important to really practice every day because that's where you build that muscle memory of just enough pressure going down and then having to go really light on your upstrokes. But see, the beauty of this is that you don't have to get it right and perfect the first time around. You can come back in like this one and kind of like clean up the lines, like what I'm doing. I love this color. It's so pretty. This is the passion fruit. This is from the brights set. It's so beautiful. Uh, I feel like this one is not thick enough. So I'm just going to add more width to my stroke in here. Just like that. So this is like the perfect soft muted uh, gingerbread lady. And then we have this pop of pink in here for our lettering. That's how I really like to do it. You know, so it's not like all soft and pastel where sometimes it can be, you know, it's hard to bring it to life when you are using soft muted colors. So what I do is I like to have use bold colors for my lettering or for my accents. For example, the stars that I have around it, you know, use the bright pink and the teal color just to, to bring back some life and color to the illustration. Here we go. Judith said she's not using the doing the lettering. That's totally okay. Yeah, just fill it with stars and some dots. Maybe add some peppermint, you know, add some candies in there. I think that'll be great. All right. I love it. Love it. There. And this time I'm going to use my pencil to add some, some of the stars that I have. Oh, look, we have some splatters in here too. And that's what I want to add here. So I'm going to do some splatter of the gelatos. So I'm just going to load my brush with water. And I'm going to make sure that this part right here of the gelatos are really, really wet. And so I'm just going to kind of like add some like this. So I have some splatters of pink. Like that. If you don't like this platter look, skip this part. I'm intentionally just adding this platter where the lettering part is. I don't want my gingerbread lady to have splatters, just the lettering part. So just careful right there. You can also load it with water and then tap your brush like this with your thumb, I mean your pointer finger. Like that. Like that. Maybe I'll have a little bit of here. Okay. But not on her face. I love it. Let's see. And then use my pencil to add more accents and just embellishments, some stars in here. And to me, the more imperfect my star is, I really love it. It's funny. It's so ironic how when I started, you know, practicing my illustration, I wanted it, everything to look perfect. Um, I just want my 
corners to just be right and symmetrical. And, you know, but now the more I do it, I'm intentionally making it look imperfect because it really does add character to what I am doing. So for example, my stars, look how wonky some of the stars are, but it just work. It really does. So that's what I want you to do is I want to encourage you to really find little things and tweaks like that, that makes your drawing yours. For example, you want your stars to be more rounded or um, you want it really, really small. But if you want it to look like a little bit like mine, like wonky and not symmetrical, that's, that's it, you know, but keep playing, keep creating and just really explore what feels good and what looks good to you, because that's all that matters is you, what you think and that process of creating. Just like that. And then I'm going to use a bit of the teal. Since I have my marker, I really want to use it also. And I'm just going to add some dots of some teal. So, and even with my circle, I'm not going to make it perfect. So it's kind of like imperfect circles as well. So just add some dots everywhere. And for the placement of the dots, I'm not overthinking it. I'm just going to kind of like filling the space. And then if you're going to keep a sketchbook, a journal, you should really date it also. Have the date in there. And then I've started doing that so that, you know, next year when I look at the drawing and I look at my illustration, I say, oh, I created that December of last year. You know, so you really see that progress and you see seeing it and really flipping through your pages. It really does bring joy. I mean, you know, and, and I know it's going to give you the same satisfaction as well, because you look at your progress and you see it and you're like, wow, I've, I've really, really improved so much. And that's what you should always tell yourself. Even if you don't see it, you know that there's something in there. You're just being hypercritical. All right, I'm going to add more stars and I'm going to use the Odyssey color, the yellow. I'm not sure if it's going to show up, but I'm just going to add stars and dots and just to bring in some of the yellow warmth color as well. But this is it, you guys. How's everyone's work? Since I don't know how to bake, this is my gingerbread for this year. <laughs> um, no baking for me, but I did and created a gingerbread girl and just painted it. There we have it. It's so dark cute. Oh, Marie, that's so cute. I love it. I love it so much. So did you use a marker also with that? Oh, I see. I can see it. I can see the texture and all that. That's really, really nice. And if you guys created something along with me, that's so pretty. Oh, my goodness. We would love to see it. Thank you, Sarah. That's so pretty. If you guys created something and you do have a social media, I would love to see them. If you use the hashtag, make it with Michaels, I scroll that hashtag to kind of see, you know, what you guys or You can always tag me at Mommy Lay. I love seeing your creations. And I also share it on my social media because I just love it when you guys share what we created, what we've learned, what we've done. And it's just, it just brings me so much joy. In behalf of Faber Castell USA, thank you so much for attending our classes this year. Thank you for investing in our products. I hope that it's bringing you joy. It's helping you with your creative projects. We have so much more in store for you for next year. Um, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Thank you, Michael Stores, for doing the these classes, you know, for all of us to enjoy and learn together. Um, I wish you a happy, merry Christmas and all the best for the upcoming year of 2023. Great health, happiness, and love. I wish you all the best. Stay creative. Enjoy your time with your loved ones. I will talk to you again soon next year. God bless you, everybody. Thank you all so much.